हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज आलोक सेमवाल एंड टुडेज लेक्चर इज अबाउट आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी इन दिस आई विल डिस्कस इंट्रोडक्शन एंड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट इज क्रोमेटोग्राफी क्रोमेटोग्राफी इज द सेपरेशन ऑफ अ मिक्सचर ऑफ कंपाउंड्स इनटू इट्स इंडिविजुअल कंपोनेंट्स बेस्ड ऑन देयर रिलेटिव इंटरेक्शंस विद एन इनर्ट मैट्रिक्स आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी एज द नेम सजेस्ट आयन एक्सचेंज क्रोमेटोग्राफी इज ए प्रोसेस दैट अलाउज द सेपरेशन ऑफ आयंस एंड पोलर मॉलिक्यूल्स बेस्ड ऑन देयर एफिनिटी टू आयन एक्सचेंजेस इट कैन बी डिफाइंड एज द रिवर्सिबल एक्सचेंज ऑफ आयंस इन द सोल्यूशन विद आयंस इलेक्ट्रोस्टेटिकली बॉन्ड टू सम शॉर्ट ऑफ इन सॉलिबल मैट्रिक्स और स्टेशनरी फेस This technique is extremely useful in the separation of charged compounds like proteins differing by only one charged amino acid. In ion exchange chromatography technique, one can choose whether to bind the substance of interest and allow the contamination to pass through the column and vice versa. This technique has been developing since 19th century which was firstly used for purifying the drinking water. Ion exchange chromatography is a distinct principle of chromatography performed in the column. Principle of separation in ion exchange chromatography. The principle of separation is thus by reversible exchange of ions between the target ions present in the sample solution to the ions present on ion exchanges. In this process two types of exchangers are used first one cationic exchangers and second one anionic exchangers cationic exchangers possesses negatively charged group and these will attract positively charged cations these exchangers are also called acidic ion exchange materials because their negative charges result from the ionization of acidic groups anionic exchangers anionic exchangers have positively charged groups that will attract negatively charged anions these are also called basic ion exchange materials now we will try to understand the process of ion exchange chromatography by following diagram Ion exchange chromatography is most often performed in the form of column chromatography. However, there are also thin layer chromatographic methods that work basically based on the principle of ion exchange. This picture is showing complete ion exchange process in ion exchange chromatography. Here this column is filled with polymer beds of negatively charged functional groups. which is called as stationary phase when protein mixture is added in column containing cation exchangers proteins move through the column by the rate controlled by the ph being used proteins with more negative charge move faster while proteins with positive charge binds to the negatively charged beds final result is earlier elution of negatively charged proteins here protein mixture is used as an mobile phase while column containing cation exchanger is used as an stationary phase principle of ion exchange chromatography Ion exchange chromatography relies on the attraction between oppositely charged stationary phase known as an ion exchanger and analyte. Analyte is a substance whose chemical constituents are being identified and measured. The ion exchanger consists of an inert support medium coupled covalently to positive which is an ion exchanger or negative which is cation exchanger functional groups. to these covalently bond functional groups the opposite charged ions are bonded 
which will be exchanged with like charged ions in the sample having charged magnitude more than the ions bonded to the matrix. So, if I, an ion exchanger, in this picture you can see an ion exchanger containing a positively charged stationary phase particles. This is a cation exchanger containing negatively charged stationary phase particles. So the positively charged anion exchanger will have affinity towards the negatively charged analyte. And negatively charged cation exchanger will have affinity towards the positively charged analyte. Thus, if anion exchange chromatography is performed, negatively charged sample components will interact more with the stationary phase and will be exchanged for like charged ions already bonded to the matrix. And in case of cation exchange chromatography, positively charged sample components will interact more with the stationary phase and will be exchanged for the like charged ions already bonded to the matrix. That is how the ion exchange chromatography works. Next is types of ion exchanges. There are two types of ion exchangers, cationic and anionic. Following table contains some commercially available cation exchangers. For example, umbilite is having SO3H functional groups and styrene or divinyl benzene as an framework material. Here copolymers used are homoporous in nature. Next one is Umberlite 200. It contains SO3H functional group and same framework material as in the case of Umberlite but copolymer used is heteroporous in nature. Next one is SE Cellulose. It contains C2H4 SO3H functional group and cellulose as framework material. Next are anionic exchangers. Anionic exchangers have positively charged groups that will attract negatively charged anions. Following table contains few commercially available anion exchangers. For example, Umberlite IRA 400 is having CS2N positive CS3 whole thrice functional group and framework material is styrene or divinyl benzene copolymers which are homoporous in nature. Next one is zero lit FFIP. It contains same functional group as in the case of Umberlite IRA 400. Framework material is same, but it is heteroporous in nature. Next one is zero lit NIP. Functional group is same as ever. Framework material is same but it is isoporous in nature. Last one is QAE Cifadex A25. It contains ammonium ion as functional group and dextran as framework material. So that's all for today. We will discuss instrumentation and applications of ion exchange chromatography in next class. Thank you.